You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Today on our Mindset and Motivation Monday, we've got a great one here today. I have what I believe is one of the key factors of even when you believe that you're putting in the effort, you're putting in the hustle, that you're doing the steps or doing the things that you're supposed to do, you're still not getting the results you want. And so, again, there are so many reasons in life of why people don't achieve their goals. One of the reasons is that Some people actually don't put in the time, right? They don't put in the effort and then they expect the result to still be there. And you probably know some of those people in your life, but I doubt you're one of those people who is listening to the podcast, who are reading articles, who are reading books, who are trying to do the right things. Like you're not part of that group because yes, there are some people who, you know, they sleep nine, 10 hours a day. They, you know, put in little effort. They just kind of skate by in life and they're wondering why their results aren't, you know, to where they want to be. So, but if you're willing to put in that effort, if you're willing to actually, you know, go to the gym to eat right or exercise at home, any of those specific things, work with a health practitioner. So you're doing that, but you're still not getting the exact results you want. There is a reason. I want to tell you what that is today. So I called the show how to de-stress your life in order to get ahead. But I was also debating that I should call this show really how to decrease your input to increase your output. So decreasing your input to increase your output. What does that mean? Well, one of the reasons why we don't get ahead is because we always think that we need to do more, right? So that's kind of a false trap. We don't always need to do more. We're most likely doing enough in life. We're putting in enough hours, meaning like we're working, we're also trying to eat right, we're maybe doing some exercise. If you have a family, you're taking care of your family or taking care of your parents or, you know, maybe you've got a friend who has issues and you're helping them out. You know, we're, we're kind of like we're putting in the effort. We're certainly putting in the hours. We're probably getting up and then right from when we get up to, you know, when we get home at night, uh, we're hustling, we're moving. So I don't agree that we need to do more in order to be more. What I actually believe is this, is I think we have too much coming into our body, too much coming into our brain so that we can't actually have any downtime to actually get some clarity. Because I found that sometimes when I'm like just treading water, I'm trying to just, I'm trying to get ahead is the only thing that actually helps me is to just sit back, stop everything or as much as I can, because the train can't completely stop, right? But slow it down, take some of the things off of, I hate to use the phrase, but off of my plate and say, okay, I'm at my ground zero, my bottom of what I can do. Now, let me just take a deep breath. This is my goal. This is what I want to achieve. I can now think clearly because I'm not juggling a dozen different things, more more of those really bad analogies. So what is it now that I can do? And I can start to think more clearly. You have to keep in mind that every time you get an email, every time that you're on social media, every time you're looking at a post, it's just more and more input. And then when you're outside, you're being bombarded by marketing, by advertisements, by all of these things. And when you're home, then you have a lot of demands from your family or from your spouse, your partner, uh, from parents, whatever it might be. It's very difficult to get clear. And that's why I want to talk about for a few moments before I talk about the next part of that plan is how to get clear. So one of the things that I do is I start to read more, meaning like I read more on certain topics. So, right. I mean, there's a million different topics I could read on. So what I start to read on more about is let's talk about goal achievement or the law of attraction or creating a vision for yourself. Remember, all of these things aren't woo woo. It's actually just trying to focus and channel your energy in this part right right now. We're talking about your psychology into the thing that you're trying to achieve, because right now your energy is dispersed. It's in a million different 
different directions and you're running all those directions and you can't keep up. So what a self-help, what a vision type book does is it simply gets you focused. You are reading the 10 pages a day like I recommend. You're doing some of the exercise in the book. You are getting focused. And at the same time, hopefully you'll do what I do is you stop reading email all throughout the day. I have certain times that I read my email during the day. I get hundreds of emails per day and I apologize that I can't answer all all of those, all I can answer for are my managers for my team and I can answer them for the private wellness clients that I particularly work with, whether it's in my office or through Skype consultations. I can't answer any additional emails. That's already over a hundred a day. I I mean, it's like, it's physically not possible when you think about it. Even if I only spent three minutes on 100 different emails, like reading and replying, a minute and a half to read, focus on it, a minute and a half to write back, just on average, that would be 300 minutes per day. And if we divide that by 60, I think it's like five hours, right? So Luckily, I don't have to reply back to all of those, but I do two hours to two and a half hours of email a day. I can't do anything more than that because it just destroys productivity. I wouldn't be able to record a podcast. I wouldn't actually be able to see people in my practice, but the direct messages that I get on Instagram, on Facebook, it's just not possible for me to even read them all. And the same goes for you, depending on whatever level that you're at with that, because they are distractions. They are, even though you're busy, and I would be busy for five hours a day reading and responding back to all of my emails, but it'd be five hours hours of my day. That's not a lot of time to do other things, especially when you add in like an hour for lunch and then, you know, like that's just not a lot of time. So the thing is you have to start prioritizing and managing your schedule. So one thing I do is I have different email accounts set up and the email account for my managers and my private wellness clients that I work with goes to one account. Those are the ones that I read to make sure that everyone's all set for the day. And then after that, I don't respond again until then lunch. And then after that, I don't respond again until after my work day. And you know, if someone then emails me at eight o'clock at night or whatever it might be, I don't respond. I don't because I'm not reading them. So that allows me just to kind of cool it down at night to relax, turn off the car, turn down the engine. And that is how you start to actually de-stress your body as well. Get your mind back because then I can read at night. I can hang out with my family. I can hang out with my wife. We can relax. We can watch whatever it is like TV show that we like to watch. We watch typically one a night to just kind of wind down to relax most nights. The other thing is I'm never worried about, you know, an emergency because I tell everyone, anyone who has my cell phone number, the best way to reach me is to text me. And it's basically for family and for the people who are like my fitness director, my, my managers, the people who are actually running our two locations, because I, I see people all day. I create, you know, all of this kind of stuff and they're just fantastic at kind of implementing and seeing the 20,000 plus appointments that we have per year. So again, what I'm doing is prioritizing, but really more than anything is I'm prioritizing brain space and what we call kind of like in the tech world, bandwidth. You run out of bandwidth, meaning like I'm a person who loves to have a hundred tabs open for all of my internet, you know, windows. And that allows me to like, look at research on one, look at videos on another, read articles on this one. I have my labs on the other one. And the problem is my computer can't handle all that. It's just like this little, this this iMac that looks beautiful in my office. I love it, but it can't take all of that. So my IT person says, you can't have that many windows open. That's why your computer runs so slowly. That's why you can't open up a Word document. Like it just, the, the little pinwheel spins over and over. So it's the same thing with your life. You can't take on new things. You can't actually focus and achieve one thing when you have a hundred different browser tabs open. And so the first thing you have to do is you say, where can I cut back? And for me, I'm not getting rid of all my email. I'm prioritizing which emails I can actually handle. And then I'm saying this time of the day, I do the same exact thing with social media. I don't look at social media all day except for at lunch. And then I look at it after work when I'm just my relaxed time. That's it. The rest of the time is being put into my work or my reading or whatever else it is. I mean, it's exercising for myself. It's also lunch, but that doesn't mean that I'm using social media at that time. Actually at lunch would be my time and I can look at it then if I, you know, I choose to. And again, this is my plan. This is what I created for myself to achieve my goals. Yours doesn't have to be exactly like mine. I'm simply sharing my example with you that has helped others. And then another thing I do is I make sure, you know, the weekends are my time. They're my time and they're my family's time. And when you have kids, you understand that your time is really your kid's time. But what I also look to do on those weekends is sometimes I might spend some time with my friends, but really 
really from Saturday night to Sunday night, there's no email checking at all. Anyone who needs me, text me. And it's really just a complete unwind. And it's just great. And then Sunday night, I just kind of plan for that next week, like I've talked about in previous podcasts. And that allows me then to just remove all that anxiety for the start to that next week. Just plan everything. Just stay relaxed, stay cool, and then just, just ease into the week. Just nice and relaxed. So that is what I talk about, decreasing input to increase output. Now, we say, well, how does that increase output now? Well, since I now have an hour or two back to myself, or I'm at least closing half of those browser tabs, now I have more energy, more bandwidth to put onto something else. And then I start to just focus in what that is. I don't create a dozen goals to achieve in a month. That's not really realistic. I look for one big one and then maybe one or two smaller ones. So if you're looking to lose weight, let's say, your big one would be weight loss, right? And that's what that's focused around. And the focus around that is going to be your nutrition and your exercise. Those are the main things. And then maybe you have one or two other sub goals. Let's talk about maybe January, you know, upcoming new year. The other one might be, well, I'm going to, in addition to that, maybe make a better plan to see my parents more often. So maybe I go and see them once every two weeks. I have, I've lunch with them on a Sunday, you know, make a plan for yourself. And then you have a, might have one more smaller one, which maybe is just a once a month type thing. Okay. Well, once a month, I'm going to reconnect with a friend that I haven't seen or talked with or met up with in years. You know, so again, one big one, like the majority of your focus has to be on that big goal, whatever it is you achieve. Cause remember, if you don't put enough focus on that goal, there's just no chance you're going to achieve it. Your life there's just too much competition for your time, right? And your energy and your your mind's focus. So what you need to do is in the forefront of your mind to achieve any goal, anything that's really worthwhile to you, you need to focus on it. If it's a relationship, that has to be number one. You have to focus on that. Now, you, again, you can, you're can you still working. You're still taking care of everything else in your life. But the majority of your focus, what you think about, what you journal, what you jot down about, what you create you know, time for, what you prioritize is that one big goal. And the only way you can do that is if you kind of snag back a few hours per week or maybe even an hour or two per day. And you can do that. You really can. You can cut down on your TV time. You cut down on your internet browsing time. It's amazing. Like if you go internet free for a day, meaning like you only have to do your work stuff. So you don't get to use social media. You don't get to use YouTube. You don't get to use anything else, of course, except this podcast, but you don't get to use anything else, right? So you get to do your email for work and you get, that's it. I think you'll be shocked and surprised that you're not checking the news, that you're not checking social media, how much time you get back. And now if you could channel that into what you are looking to achieve, I'm telling you, you will hit those goals. So my advice for you, today is start to just decrease the amount of input you have coming into you in any way possible. That will start to allow you then to take a breath. You can start to de-stress. And when that happens, then you can start to focus on what it is you really want, getting clear, maybe start to read some books, start to get focused on that. And then you can implement a plan. And now that you bought some time back, you can actually implement that plan because you have the time. So hopefully this helps. I'm happy to answer any other follow-up questions on this. And always, I really appreciate you tuning in. I love the Mindset Motivation Mondays. I'm telling you, they're just as much for myself as they are maybe for you. And please do feel free to share this information with anyone you believe it could help. Ever wonder what the best sauna, blue blockers, sleep trackers, wake lights, salt lamps, or other health gadgets are? Or what about the top non-toxic mattresses, sheets, soaps, bath products, toothpaste, and cookware? Or would you like to know the cleanest choices for hemp hearts, meal delivery services, supplements, and much more? I personally curated, researched, and now created a resource page of all of my top picks that continues to grow each week. These are the exact products I use in my own life, with my family, in my private practice, and they're the ones I trust. To find out all of my up-to-date recommendations and all the details, simply head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash resources. 